Okay, I have a quick tutorial for you today. I'm currently in the process of setting up a lot of automations inside of Fluent CRM for Convology. I'm doing a lot of migration from Active Campaign back to Fluent CRM um, because of the pricing change. And as I'm getting Fluent CRM all set up again, I kind of got frustrated with some parts of Fluent CRM and I wanna hopefully help you avoid the frustration too. And that frustration comes from the email editing experience. At the end of last year, Fluent CRM released a new visual editor which I thought would be a welcome addition from having to just use the WYSIWYG editor or heaven forbid the block editor to edit emails. But uh, on its face, it's not the most intuitive experience to edit. What I'm talking about is, is basically when you open up the editor, it's, it's, it feels clunky. The experience looks actually pretty annoying. So I wanna show you how you can go from starting off with something like this that you know, where do you start, right? To having something a little bit more like this, where anytime you sit down to write an email for your business, you immediately have a starting point that's easy to jump in, easy to edit, plug and play, and you're ready to go. So I figured while I'm setting mine up, let's help you set yours up too. So here's what I'm talking about, right? You go in here, you've got an automation and you go to add a custom email. And here we have all the versions of making an email that I don't really love, but then we have the template visual builder. We can click on blank and we're back to what I was showing you earlier. So let's turn this into something usable. Uh, first things first, you can go to the section that says global style. And from here, I immediately want to increase the width of my email from 500 to 650. For me, that's kind of like a, a minimum. I think any less than that is too narrow. I like the content being aligned centered, but if you're a left aligned person, you can do that there put mine back to center lined. For the font family on the email, I don't like Arial. I want something a little simpler. I do wish that they had Roboto, but I'll choose Open Sans. I think that's a good compromise. Now back up at the top here, still under global style. Uh, the background color is not actually white. It's, I don't know if it translates over this video, but it's like this gray color. I want to get rid of that and I want to make it pure white. There we go. And it'll look normal when reading email in something like Gmail or any other email provider. And again, if we get rid of that with a little X or we try to make this transparent, uh, that's just an awful editing experience. So for me, even if it's just visual on my end, I just wanna make that pure white. The hex code, if you're not familiar, is F. You just put six Fs in there and it'll be white. Text color, we can leave the text color alone. And then at the bottom, we wanna set our link color to something on brand or something that's visually appealing to us. I'll do mine at my brand blue. Okay, and then underline text links, sure, why not? Now we need to start addressing what they've given us here as a starting point. I really don't know what they've got going on here. I think it's actually layouts. So on the layout tab on the right hand side, you can insert different like uh, full style, full width or columns and things like that. I'm not sure what they've done here with these rows. So we're going to clean this up. First thing first, we're just gonna delete that entirely. And then we're going to delete that row as well. Just make it completely blank as possible until we're left with just this right here. Now we want to go to blocks and I like to have an image inside of my emails. It's just for consistency. If you like to do the same thing, it's just easy to drag in an image and drag it to the top. And now we can just insert an image that we want to use every time. You can click upload image. Now by default, they've got something called auto width right here uh, below the logo. If you turn that off, you can see here that you can adjust the width to a percentage. I think auto width is just going to stretch it to 100% or to the max of your image. And since my image is much larger, it's like 1800 pixels wide, in most cases, it's going to be way too big. So I'm going to drag mine down to something like 70%, which I think looks good. And that'll automatically be 70% on all of the different uh, window size resolution configurations. And we'll, I'll show you a way to take a look at that in just a second. Let's go click the X in the top right here and let's go back in and start adding in some content. A really important thing that I learned a hard lesson from is that inside of this editor, a couple things happen. If I were to place a text element, like let's say I put a ton of text in here. So I'll go ahead and just paste in a bunch. And what if I wanted to put a button right here well, the unfortunate reality is if I try to drag a button in, all of this is considered one block. So there's no dropping a button in the middle. Instead, what ends up happening is you drop your button down here and there's no way to get that button in the middle of this block. So I recommend you make yourself a very simple text section right here. 
and let this be a text section inside of your template. Again, the whole purpose of this is to have a template that you can reuse when you're sitting down to start a new email and not have to worry about fussing with all of these settings. Like literally everything we've done so far, we can skip. So let's just put one content block here and let's stylize this and then we'll duplicate it so that we can have a couple different positioned content blocks for our template. So with the content section selected, go over on the right hand side and I think 14 is too small, at least for my eyes. I like to do 16 as a minimum for readability. And I think left aligned is totally fine. And line height 140, I also think is pretty good. We could bump that up maybe to like 160, a little breathing room there, maybe 150. And you want to leave the links to inherit the body styles that we already implemented. And the rest of that is pretty good. Now we want to click the X and go back into our blocks and we want to drag in a header because you don't want to put headers inside of paragraph blocks because then you can't move those headers independent of those blocks. So we're kind of back to square one, the same issue that we've been trying to avoid. So with your header selected, you can stylize this. I think bold looks good here and I think 22 might be too big or maybe it's just right, but 20 seems nice. And that way the header is a little separate. And also with the header selected on the right hand side, you can choose whether you want it to be an H1, 2, 3, or 4. As far as emails go, I don't think they make that big of a deal. It's more of like a general styling type thing. So you can choose H1, 2, 3, etc. Just choose H2 because it feels good. And that'll be my header. So I can put into my template header text here. So now I have a header, text, and a button. I want to stylize my button now. So let's click on our button and let's give it our brand color background. And on our button, let's make the font size the same as our paragraph text. And for me, I want to left align the button. All right, generally speaking, that looks pretty good to me. You can play around with the design of your button however you want, more padding and stuff like that down below. But now let's kind of take inventory of what we have. We have one nice solid row here. Inside of it, we have an image, a header, a paragraph, and a button. Now using this as a template, we're already so far ahead because we have our header text, our paragraph text, and our button. We can save ourselves some additional time here by taking this paragraph text and then just duplicating it by clicking on the text itself over on the right hand side. I like to make sure I can see this little grabber icon and just click the duplicate button and then just drag below the button. Now we've got ourselves a great starting place to have text above and below a button with a header. Couple little last minute tweaks and we're almost done. For me on all of my emails, I probably want more space between my logo and the first instance of text. So I'm going to scroll down on the image with it selected. And here where I see general padding, I'll just go to this more options section, expand that out. And now I can go to the bottom and I can increase this from 10, maybe I'll up it to about 30 or so. And now that looks like it has more breathing room. Now that our template is to a place where we're happy with it, we can preview what it looks like on other devices. Down on the bottom left, there's a little, little menu down here where you can preview what it looks like. We can click the eyeball here to preview our email, or you can choose a device like what it would look like on a MacBook. I think that actually looks pretty good. My image being 70% of the width feels like it fits nicely. There's good breathability on the sides. I think it looks good overall. So we'll exit our preview here in the top right. And you can see here it adjusted our workspace because we were previewing it on mobile. Just in the bottom left hand corner, we can go back to our desktop editor. And now we're ready to save this so we can reuse it again. Since we were already editing an email inside of an automation, we want to click save and close in the top right. Now we have our email sitting here. We don't wanna leave yet. We want to click these three dots to the right of import template. And we want to click save as template. I'll give mine a name. I'm just going to call it demo template and click save. And now our template's been saved. So that's how you can easily create a template while editing an automation, but there's another really easy place to edit. So if your window's like mine, don't forget to scroll down and click save settings. You don't want to lose any of that work. Now let me show you how you can edit that template that you just made and also make others without having to go into an automation. You just go up to the top where it says emails and click on email templates. From here, you can select your template that you want to edit by clicking on it or clicking edit, or you can click these three dots and duplicate, which is really cool to make different types of templates without having to go through all that work again. You can export it so that other people can use your templates, or you can share them across different sites where you have Fluent CRM installed, or you can just delete the template. Let's go back into our template, and now it loads. 
and you can see here that it's loading a little bit different than before. We have our WordPress sidebar on the left, but generally these are all of the exact same settings. Let's go over how to use this email template in an automation or a campaign. So I'll just go into an automation and I'll add an email here to send a custom email. And I'm starting right back over where I was, right? But instead of having to start completely blank, I simply come here to this button that says import template. And now I just have to choose the template that I want and click import. There it is, I can already see it. I'm gonna click launch visual editor. And now I can get started writing my email without any of that frustration of having to redo these settings every single time. I hope that was helpful to you. It was really frustrating for me when I was kind of diving in and ready to use Fluent CRM just to find that the experience of having to write every single email and tweak all those settings was really frustrating. And then the templates themselves, I didn't like how they broke them up into different rows for different elements. I wanted one row. I just wanted the ability to quickly replicate a headline and body font and things like that. So now I just have one template that I can import directly into literally any email that I'm making in Fluent CRM. I can drop my text in, I can duplicate sections, and I'm ready to go. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions about creating templates inside of Fluent CRM, feel free to leave a comment down below.